Welcome to JPC News. This is the second broadcast of the 2015 fall quarter. My name is JJ Schindler. And my name is Shelby Turner. Let's start off with some interesting news in regards to California allowing violent criminals outside prison walls. The state of California has had inmate firefighters units of nearly 4,000 members for quite some time now. These members have always been only minimum security inmates with no history of violent crimes. However, now the state is considering allowing inmates with histories of violence to join the inmate firefighting unit, although officials do say that they will not allow inmates with violent attitudes. There have been many concerns regarding public safety on this matter, and the controversy continues. All right, now on to business news with Andrew. Thank you, JJ and Shelby. The U.S. Forest Service was sued by various environmental groups this Tuesday on the charge that the service has been allowing Nestle Waters to draw millions of gallons of water from a creek in the San Bernardino Mountains under a permit that supposedly expired 25 years ago. Nestle maintains that the permit is valid and is continuing to draw water until the permit has been properly reviewed. The application could take up to 18 months, however which may or may not have to do with the fact that the service has a backlog of about 2,500 expired special use permits. Speaking of lawsuits, Apple could be faced with paying enormous damages after a U.S. jury found that technology used in many iOS device processors was in fact owned by the University of Wisconsin-Madison's licensing arm. The jury also ruled that the patent in question was valid. Originally sued in January of 2014, the popular tech giant could be facing up to $862.4 million in damages. In other news, Twitter is planning to lay off 8% of their employees, or around 336 people, the company announced earlier this week. The cuts will come primarily from the product and engineering teams and are apparently intended to increase efficiency inside the company, according to Jack Dorsey, who was named permanent CEO last week. Quote, we feel strongly that engineering will move much faster with a smaller and nimbler team, and the rest of the organization will be streamlined in parallel." End quote. That's all I have for business. Back to Shelby and JJ. Thank you, Andrew. And in other news, there has been a tragic occurrence in the U.S. this week. On Monday, October 12th, USC Upstate has a small college in South Carolina was in mourning after four student athletes died from injuries in a car wreck. These students died at the scene and one died at the hospital. Killed were Sarah Vandenberg, 20, of Zephyr Hills, Florida, James Campbell, 21, of Greenville, South Carolina, Horace Miller Sproul, 4th, 20, of Birmingham, Alabama, and Joshua Lee, 20, of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Campbell and Sproul played on the soccer team, Berg played tennis, and Lee ran cross country. Here is a photo of one of the students who passed away, Joshua Lee. His fellow classmates and his tracking co track coach said nothing about, but great things about Josh and what a wonderful person he was. But coach Natalie Smith said, quote, we need to focus on the positive, all the great things about him because we know that that's what he would, have want, would want because his personality and attitude would be to really look on the bright side of things. Let's keep Josh, the three other students, their families, and friends and their teammates all in our prayers this week through this most difficult time. Yes, many prayers, please. Now on to, under, now on to entertainment with Aaron McAfee. Thank you, JJ. Let's start off with some news from the box office. The Martian leads for its second weekend. Hotel Transylvania 2 captures second place once more while still outperforming its first installment. Pan, with its reported $150 million budget, flops at third place. In other news, for the first time, the GI Film Festival is coming to San Diego. It is being advertised as so. Ever wonder what it takes to get into the entertainment industry? Join us Saturday, October 17th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Barracks 17 at NTC Library Station. More than 20 businesses and organizations in education, media, technology, and entertainment will be on site, along with workshops on storytelling and filmmaking. There's free admission and no RSVP required. This is a great opportunity for all the film students here at JP Catholic. So do consider attending. After all, it's free. Well, that's all I have for entertainment news today. Back to Shelby and JJ.
In other news, Georgia's Stone Mountain, one of Georgia's largest tourist attractions, receiving more than four million people visiting a year, and which was once a site that hosted Ku Klux Klan cross burnings and remains a home for Confederate tributes, will soon be adding a very different symbol, a tower in honor of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. In this picture, you can see the stone wall features a number of Confederate symbols, including the huge engravings of Confederate faces, Jefferson Davis, Robert E. Lee, and Stonewall Jackson. The tower will now feature the replica of the Liberty Bell and give literal representation to the line from King's I Have a Dream speech, Let Freedom Ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. The Georgia chapter of the Sons of Confederate Veterans released a statement saying tower would be, quote, in contradistinction to the purpose for which the park exists and would make it a memorial to something different. The MLK plan has support of Georgia Governor Nathan Deal, who, though details still have to be worked out, including the use of the line from the King's speech, since I Have a Dream is copyrighted and controlled by his children. Yolanda Shackelford, an African-American woman who was chaperoning a group of children to Stone Mountain that day, when asked how she felt about the subject, she said, quote, we have to look at history. We have to look at how it is affecting all people. Continuing to say, as you can see, we are an organization of many faces, and so we always want to consider our total community. It'll be very interesting to see what actually happens to that tower, don't you think, JJ? Oh, I absolutely agree, Shelley. I look forward to hearing more about how this progresses. All right, we're going to move on to world news with Jenna Christakis, but stay tuned to find out why you may want to consider moving to Australia when we come back. Thank you, Shelby. This past Sunday, the last dictator in Europe, Alexander Lukashenko of Belarus, was re-elected for the fifth time, leading the vote by 80.3%. He had mentioned prior to the vote that if he were to win, he would need to win a higher percent of the vote than in previous elections, which he successfully did, as the previous election was won with a 79.6% of the vote. The surprising factor was that he was running against Tatiana Kovacic, a pro-democratic candidate, but unfortunately she received only a 5.6%. In other news, a painting that had been looted from the Polish National Museum during World War II was recovered this week and presented back to the museum. It was found by Bob Whitman in his own home in Ohio. His father had taken the painting as a trophy when the stationed in Poland and it had been hanging in the dining room of the Whitman family home ever since. It has now been returned to its rightful home. Well, that is all I have today for World News. Back to JJ and Shelby. Thank you, Jenna. Now, as promised, we'll tell you why people may consider moving to Australia. Every year, the Economist Intelligence Unit does statistical reviews on the cities around the world to rate which one is the most livable. And this year, Melbourne, Australia earned the spot on the most livable city. According to the EIU, those living in Melbourne, Australia enjoy a good infrastructure, healthcare system, and low murder rate. So if you happen to be pondering an out of the country move, you should consider Melbourne, Australia. And now to Sports with Joseph. Thank you, Shelby, and thank you for joining me in sports. Starting with the MLB, here are the final scores from Friday. Houston Astros were beat by Kansas City Royals, Texas Rangers beat the Blue Jays of Toronto, San Luis Cardinals smashed the Chicago Cubs, the Mets struck out the Dodgers. On Saturday, the Cubs had their revenge on the Cardinals, Dodgers kicked the Mets out of the park. Sunday, the Canadian Blue Jays of Toronto clobbered the Texas Rangers. On Monday, Kansas City Royals beat the Astros again, the Blue Jays beat those Rangers again, the Cubs finally smashed the Cardinals. Dodgers lost to the Mets. Tuesday, the Cubs again defeated the Cardinals, and the Dodgers won the rematch with those Mets, as it should be. The Rangers lost to the Blue Jays again Wednesday, and the Astros were defeated a third time by the Royals. Last Sunday in football, Giants beat the 49ers, Patriots trumped the Cowboys, Broncos trampled the Raiders, Cardinals made carnage of the Lions, Buffalo Bills beat Tennessee Titans, Buccaneers ate the Jaguars, Eagles crushed the Saints, Packers punked the Rams, Bears beat the Chiefs, Bengals ate the Seahawks, Browns defeated the Ravens, and Falcons surpassed the Redskins. Monday night, Pittsburgh Steelers stole victory from the mighty San Diego Chargers. The brunt of the action occurred in the fourth quarter, Steelers making 14 points with Chargers scoring a close 13. 
The final score, 24 to 20. Michael Vick of the Steelers was quoted saying, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Wise words. Again, for all interested in participating in JPCU sports or just feel like watching, by all means, check up on Facebook for details on future games. And remember, flag football meets every Sunday at noon. Be there. That's all this week. Thanks for tuning in. Joseph Venegas signing off. Thank you, Joseph. Before we get to Catholic news, here's a quick weather update. Um, this upcoming week's weather forecast shows that it should be cooling down a little bit. This weekend is expected to reach temperatures in the high 70s, low 80s. Starting Monday, temperatures will rise slightly and we'll be we'll seeing a lot of sunny skies with temperatures rising to the 80s. This Wednesday and Thursday, it will reach 92 and 93 degrees and on Friday, it will come back down to a few degrees at 88 and Saturday will drop all the way back down to 82 degrees. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to some cooler weather. <sighs> Me too, it's been so hot lately. Friendly, give us a small break from all the heat we've ex been experiencing, but we'll get back to that beach weather at the start of next week. Oh, and speaking of beach, next time you go to the beach, you might be surprised to see pink water. Imperial Beach rolled in waves with pink water this week. We found out that the pink water is due to a pollution experiment that the scientists from Mexico and the U.S. are conducting. What these scientists have done is poured 30 gallons of harmless rhodamine dye into the Tijuana River estuary to track where the water goes as it leaves the estuary and to compare how pollution moves around the coast. Well, apparently it's going into the waters of Imperial Beach, making pink the new blue for this ocean water. No, I want to go see the pink water. Me too. <laughs> Well, that's all we have for weather in the Beach Report. Now on to Kristen McCarthy with Catholic News. Thank you, JJ. With less than two weeks to go until the conclusion of the 14th General Assembly of Bishops, the media is abuzz with controversy and contradiction, attributing a flurry of statements to various high-ranking prelates. In a press conference last Tuesday, Vatican spokesperson Father Thomas Rusica stated that, quote, there must be an end to exclusionary language and a strong emphasis on embracing reality as it is. Don't be afraid of new and complex situations. The language of inclusion must be our language, always considering pastoral and canonical possibilities and solutions." Unquote. However, Toronto Cardinal Thomas Collins appears to disagree with this somewhat ambiguous statement, as he responded to it by clarifying that, quote, meeting people where they're at comes first, but that is only the first thing. The second thing is to help them become what God wants them to be." Unquote. Various other Synod Fathers have taken a noticeably stronger position, issuing statements such as, mercy cannot be encountered unless it is measured against an eternal law, and also that mercy toward sinners is not a form of weakness nor an abandonment of church teaching. The divided perspective of the Synod Fathers with regard to the Church's discipline on marriage and family is pointed enough that it allegedly prompted 13 cardinals to issue a letter of complaint to the Holy Father. Among the signatories of this letter are Cardinals Gerald Muller, George Pell, and Timothy Dolan. The letter itself expresses concern that the Synod is focusing too much on the specific issue of communion for the divorced and remarried and is missing the larger picture of why the Synod was called namely to reinforce the dignity of marriage and family as intended within the plan of God. It is expected that a final comprehensive document containing the conclusions of the Synod will be released shortly before it closes on the 25th. In other news, the Chicago Tribune reports that the remains of St. Maria Goretti arrived in the U.S. last Monday and were on display in various churches throughout the city. This was the first time that the relics of this young saint have ever visited the U.S drawing large crowds to offer prayers and thanksgiving to the beloved saint, who is widely revered as an example of purity and forgiveness. Well, that's all I've got for Catholic News today. Back to JJ and Shelby. Thank you, Chris. Just a quick reminder before we sign off. Tomorrow, Saturday, October 17th, is the JPCU Coffee House Talent Show. The show starts at 7 p.m. Please come support your talented fellow students and don't forget to bring your favorite coffee mug or teacup. Also, if you notice, the politics segment was not aired today. That is because we will not be, we will be doing a bi-weekly segment. So we will, it'll be available every other week this quarter. All right, thank you for joining us today. I'm Shelby Turner. And I'm JJ Schindler, and this is JPC News. <laughs>